Hi, it's Randy here from Randy Cycle Service. Wanted to do a short video here to show everybody uh, some of the things about carburetors, chokes, and cold starting on some of the earlier uh, carburetors that we see. And I'm going to show a few different examples. Uh, first thing is I want to dispel a few myths, rumors, and misinformation about things and how chokes work and, and so forth. So we're going to start with an Amel carburetor. This is a 930 concentric. I've just got the body here because really the part we're going to concentrate on is the choke. But I also want to um, show that that's one of the most common carburetors you find on most of the British singles and twins and things of that nature. So, generally when we go to cold start a bike, a lot of times folks will start with their vintage motorcycle and they go out when it's cold and they expect to just kind of flip the choke and start it up and walk away while they put their gloves on and do things like that. But it's really not that simple, uh, particularly on one of these early British twins. So, what happens when you go to start a cold engine is that you need a very rich fuel mixture. Uh, cold fuel does not atomize well and a cold engine just exacerbates that problem. So what we need to do is add a lot more fuel and restrict the air coming into the engine at the same time to enrich in the fuel mixture to allow the engine to warm up until it's up to normal operating temperature. Now the Amel 930 concentric series does this in a couple of ways. One way is a little device here called the Tickler and uh, funny name but it does a good job. When you push this little button down you'll notice this pin on the bottom moves down. Now normally when the float bowl is in place and you have the float here it'll push the float down that allows the fuel to fill up into the bowl and actually overflow through the main jet circuit and into the uh, throat of the carburetor giving it more fuel so that when it's cold it can start that way. That doesn't really do anything for the idle. Okay, You still have to babysit the idle until it warms up. That's just the design of this carburetor. There's no provision for a fast idle whatsoever. Now if we move around to the throat, they do have a choke valve in these carburetors as well. These got removed on a lot of these carburetors and I'm not really sure why. Many years ago, a lot of folks said, oh, they're not necessary. They took them out. Obviously, they don't work particularly well. That being said, most of these uh, bikes, I've never seen any two that seem to want to start the same way. Some require a tickler. Some require full choke, some require no choke. It really depends on the bike and the state of tune as well, as well as wear in the carburetor and a lot of other factors. At any rate, what happens when you actually set the choke on an Amel, uh, and you can do that in conjunction with the tickler if necessary, but what happens is, this is the slide looking in from the air cleaner side of the carburetor. I'm going to move the slide up just a little so you can see. There's a choke valve that actually closes and closes off the amount of air coming in. This, in effect, richens the mixture as well for when it's cold. You restrict the air, you can still pull in a lot of fuel then with a lot less air. Just very common sense that way. Here's the actual valve laying here taken out of the slide and the spring that holds it in place. Now where the confusion comes in with these, and this is what I want to show folks as well, is when you operate the choke lever on the handlebar of one of these bikes, it works pretty much counterintuitively. Most of the time you think of pulling the choke, you think of turning the lever and actually setting the choke. In this case, because the spring tension on the top of this naturally holds this in the closed position, what you have to do is actually turn the lever to lift it off of its seat and, and pull it up out of the way so that it is no longer obstructing the air passage. Now we're going to move over here to a bike. This is an unrestored bike. It's just an example that we're going to use. This is a 1970 Triumph Bonneville. This has a pair of animals on it. And we're going to go down here and we're going to look in the air horn and the throat of the carburetor. Now I'm going to go around here to the other side and operate the controls. When I turn the throttle, and I'm just going to do this so I can lift the slide up, you can see that it's open right now. Now when we set the choke, we're going to move up here and take a look at the air lever real quick. Right now, the choke is actually open. That's going to be across the bar like this. Now when we move this to where it's parallel with the bar, just like this, that actually closes the choke for cold starting. Now if we move back down to the carburetor right now, you can see that the choke valve is closed at the bottom. I just opened the slide a little so you can see it. Now if you watch this, as I open this back up, it lifts that up out of the way and that opens the slide uh, to air to come in and emit more air after the engine is warmed up. So cold, we close the choke valve, that obstructs the air and that richens the mixture and allows the engine to run cold until it warms up. Again, now this being said, there is no provision on these carburetors whatsoever for fast idle, which means that you have to hold the throttle open slightly until the engine warms up. 
that's just a necessary thing on these bikes and there's no way around that. So that's how an Amel works in terms of cold starting. Next video we're going to run through a enrichment system on a Makuni carburetor which is very conventional for a lot of Japanese bikes. So we'll see you in that video next time. Hi, it's Randy from Randy Cycle Service here again. Just wanted to run through on our carburetors. We're working on cold start of um, various designs of carburetors and things like that. We already covered the Amel. Uh, now we're going to move on to a Makuni, which is very common on the Japanese bikes. Um, and it's also a conversion for a lot of other bikes as well, so um, we'll, we'll just kind of run through that. Now, cold starting with one of these particular designs and uh, Kihin carburetors, which is another Japanese manufacturer, TK and several others, also use similar procedures as well. Now, normally in most bikes you think about setting the choke. Uh, choke is a bit of a misnomer here on this because actually this is more of an enrichment circuit. This is not a choke. Now, to confuse matters even more, Makuni even stamps the word choke into the lever here and they cast it into the plastic knob and says choke. But it isn't really a choke, it is an enrichener. Uh, choke, as we showed in the Amel, is actually a valve that closes and shuts off the amount of air coming in. Actually, the way this works, you have a plunger connected to a little lever here. Now, in some applications, we have a choke knob directly on the carburetor, depending on the layout and the type of bike it's installed in. Or lastly, we have a cable-operated plunger, which actually hooks to a little lever on the uh, handlebar. So, all three do the same thing, it's just a different way of doing it is all. So what this does, this plunger actually sits in the carburetor body, right here. It goes down in there, this mounts into place, and then the lever sticks off to the left side. Looks fairly familiar, I'm sure, to most of you folks who ride these bikes all the time. When you push down on this enrichener lever, not a choke lever, even though it says choke, you lift that plunger up. Now, obviously this one isn't screwed into place, so this is a bit of an exaggeration, but when we lift this up, what happens is two things. One, it opens an air passage right here, which admits a lot more air into the system to raise the idle. This is a true case where you actually have a fast idle or a, a raised idle for a cold start application. The second thing it does is down in the bottom of here, you'll see a small hole right in the center. That goes directly down into the float bowl. It's metered by a small jet. It draws a, a fairly large amount of liquid fuel up through there as well, atomizes it, sends that with the mixture of the extra air added from lifting the plunger through this hole right here and into the intake stream. Now, in this situation, you're enriching it by adding a lot of fuel through this passage up through here into here mixing it with the extra air here which in turn comes into the intake stream and in this situation we actually end up with a fast idle this is the type of bike you can actually start set the choke lever walk away from it let it sit there and idle by itself while it's cold until it warms up while you're putting your gloves and your helmet and things like that on with the type we demonstrated with the old Amel you cannot do that because there is no provision for a fast idle so that in turn is how this system works versus an older system. Better improvement, just a little bit different design, still does the same job, but it takes a little bit more of the operator out of the uh, equation. And that's what you have in a standard Makuni type carburetor. So we're going to cover one more in another video here in just a moment, and that will be a choke valve type carburetor that's a little different from the Amel that we saw, but still has a choke lever. Hi, it's Randy from Randy Cycle Service here again. We're back for the last installment of our enriching and uh, choke circuit uh, operation on a couple of carburetors here. Uh, the last one we're going to cover is going to be a very simple key-in carburetor off of a very early Honda. This type here just has a simple manual guillotine style valve for a choke. Now, on this one, we don't have the slide in. This is an older carburetor. It's been apart for a while, so it's not pretty, but the idea is going to be the same. Uh, in this case, we don't have any type of enrichener or tickler or anything like we saw in the Amel. We don't have the same type enrichening circuit like we had on the Makuni. All we have on this one is one very simple little lever that's just mounted to the carburetor here that operates through a linkage to a little uh, um, choke valve right here. When we lift this lever, you can see that that actually pushes that down. If we look into the air horn of the carburetor, 
we just sh simply shut a small door in here and that actually just closes off all of the air coming into the engine and allows it to draw more fuel for a cold start application. But one neat little thing about this system is that it's engineered so that you can also start cold. It does not raise the idle, so again you have to babysit the throttle, but because this valve closes completely, you would admit no air, which an engine will not run without some air even when it's cold. So they put a little spring-loaded trap door in here that can actually allow the engine vacuum to pull that open and draw just the amount of air it needs to stay running in order to uh, keep going when it's cold. Obviously once it starts cold it's up to the operator then to manually take the choke off opening it as necessary until the engine is warm enough to run on its own and operate like a normal system. And this one just has a simple little lever that operates that. Again, simple little linkage closing off the air to the air horn and enriching the mixture so you can ride away when it's cold. So that's the basic three systems that operate in a cold start uh, capacity on a motorcycle and that's how they work and hopefully that'll clarify a little bit when you got to start your bike cold you'll be able to see exactly how it works and, and know exactly what's going on as you pull that lever and push that start button and get ready for a nice ride.